2019 is another big year for television with more scripted series in development than ever before. Looking ahead, there are plenty of exciting shows premiering before the end of 2019. Netflix's Stranger Things on July 4th, Disney Plus's The Mandalorian on November 12th, CBS All Access's Star Trek Picard series, and Netflix's The Witcher. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we've narrowed down all of this year's great TV to our 10 favorite shows of 2019 so far. A just world is a sane world. There was nothing sane about Chernobyl. HBO's Chernobyl miniseries tells the disturbing story surrounding the tragic events during and after the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986. It's a haunting and inspiring account of the heroism that took place after the explosion, and the director keeps the drama personal by only focusing on a few characters at a time. Chernobyl is not an easy show to watch, but it is worth the emotional journey if you can stomach graphic scenes of death brought on by radiation. Life is like a box of timelines. You feel me? Netflix's Russian Doll is a well-crafted, mind-bending journey through one woman's inescapable night in New York City. The story centers on Natasha Leone's Nadia, who is doomed to repeat her birthday party over and over and over again after she dies in a number of tragic and humorous ways. The premise is similar to Bill Murray's Groundhog Day, but also has narrative elements in common with Edge of Tomorrow. We summed it up in our review by saying, between its perfectly calibrated mystery and flawed but fascinating characters, this is a world we want to revisit over and over again. Russian Doll has been renewed for a second season. Past is the past, and that will help me get through the now. 60 years after creator Rod Serling introduced the world to the Twilight Zone, CBS All Access and executive producer Jordan Peele gave the aging series new life with a 10-episode journey into the unknown. Like its predecessor, Peele and his team didn't stick the landing on every episode. However, our season one reviewer says, quote, this new Twilight Zone knows how to be creepy, funny, and socially relevant. And it's also nabbed the perfect host. And it's been renewed, so we'll be visiting the Twilight Zone again for a second season. Do, 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 Maybe you can give one hand to Warren so he can shove it too. Ugh, oh, and we're off. Who said soap operas are dead? HBO's star-studded, scandalous drama is back with a second season that, so far, is just as good as the first. The four-time Golden Globe-winning series follows a group of mostly affluent women living in Monterey, California, who find themselves at the center of a murder investigation. Meryl Streep's addition to the season two cast was a brilliant choice by showrunner David E. Kelly. Streep plays Mary Louise Wright, the mother of the deceased who is desperate to discover the truth behind her son's murder. Kelly's smart, witty, and suspenseful adaptation of the novel of the same name makes for a great binge if you need to catch up. Warriors have only two paths. Get killed or get better. Based on the writings of legendary martial artist Bruce Lee, Warrior is an action-packed spectacle with some of the best fight choreography you'll see outside of films like John Wick and The Raid. Warrior is set during the brutal Tong Wars of San Francisco's Chinatown and follows Assam, a martial arts prodigy who immigrates from China to San Francisco and becomes a hatchet man for one of Chinatown's most powerful organized crime families. Our view said Warrior is efficient, energetic, and enjoyable. It's American history brought to a vivid life with so much punching. And we can expect even more punching because Warrior has also been renewed for a second season. Killing Eve creator Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is currently co-writing the next James Bond flick, has produced one of the best cat and mouse thrillers on TV. Jodie Comer and Sandra Oh co-star in this addictive series based on the Villanelle novels written by Luke Jennings. Oh portrays Eve Pilastri, a British operative who becomes obsessed with an up-and-coming assassin named Villanelle, played with sadistic charm by Comer. Villanelle and Eve's explosive relationship makes for a great character study, but Killing Eve which has been renewed, also works as a suspenseful spy show that will scratch that Ian Fleming itch for at least a third season. What's your story? I can't control this thing inside of me. 
Doom Patrol is a Titan spinoff that surpasses its predecessor by completely and unapologetically embracing this bizarre team's weirdness. This group of superhero misfits resembles Marvel's X-Men, even though Doom Patrol was created first. Doom Patrol excels with its strong character development, especially in the first batch of episodes as you get to know the heroes and their respective backstories. Doom Patrol has been renewed by DC Universe for a second season. Oh. Before Phoebe Waller-Bridge created Killing Eve and stole our hearts as opinionated droid L3 in Solo, a Star Wars story, she created the razor-sharp tragicomedy Fleabag. Based on her one-woman play of the same name, Fleabag stars Waller-Bridge as the titular heroine, a self-destructive and gloriously snarky mess who frequently breaks the fourth wall to involve the audience in her questionable life choices, dysfunctional family drama, and random hookups. After a critically acclaimed first season, Fleabag somehow made manages to become even more hilarious and sometimes heartbreaking. In season two, which introduces Sherlock star Andrew Scott as the priest who Fleabag unwittingly leads into temptation, even as he does his best to guide her towards the light. There's no comedy quite as honest as frequently surprising as Amazon's Fleabag, and with six perfectly crafted episodes per season, it makes for a brief but deliciously satisfying binge. I put on a pot of coffee. Netflix's The Umbrella Academy is the second series on our list involving a group of superhero misfits and a kooky old rich dude as their benefactor. Based on the graphic novel written by My Chemical Romance's Gerard Way, Umbrella Academy follows the lives of six uniquely gifted adults who are reunited after the untimely death of their adopted father, Sir Reginald Hargreaves. After Netflix and Marvel's decision to part ways, the streaming provider needed something to fill its superhero void. Umbrella Academy did exactly that, with a team that's much more mercurial and demented than the Defenders. The Umbrella Academy has also been renewed for a second season. Yep. Okay, ma'am. Are you seeing this beautiful morning? What are you doing? How are you? Barry is a funny and heartfelt story about a hitman who wants to be an actor. Bill Hader gives an Emmy-winning performance in the main role gracefully portraying his character's inner turmoil as Barry struggles to become a better person. In season two, we begin to learn more about Barry's past in the military and how his personal traumas have shaped his life. The series also boasts a phenomenal supporting cast who will be returning for a third season in Steven Root, Anthony Kerrigan, and Henry Winkler. So what do you think is the best show on the list? Tell us in the comments section. And don't forget to check out our other videos like the best anime of 2019 so far and the best PC game so far. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN, wherever you like to watch.